Walk us through how you uh, see this minuscule drop in the ocean that the OPEC Plus group was, uh, was keen to put on the table. I got so many, I have to tell you, I got so many press clippings um, from various OPEC ministers about this. They were terribly proud that they'd done something, if not much at all. Yeah, I think, I mean, the mood was very good. I do think they think, uh, you know, again, they've done something. They are straddling a line between, look, they're very, very concerned about recessionary fears, the macro sentiment, and I understand that was a big talking point inside the meeting, uh, particularly uh, His Royal Highness uh, Prince Abdulaziz and, and Novak. Um, so they can't be adding that much more. They've also highlighted that it's refining, that's the crunch rather than crude oil. Uh, but at the same time, you know, oil prices are still close to $100. There's been calls from the United States constantly to add more. So it's it, it was a very tricky uh, line to thread. And I do think they've done it very successfully, other than the fact that, look, ultimately 100,000 barrels per day, it's a symbolic gesture. You and I both know it's not gonna make any difference to the market any difference to balance, especially because most of the countries don't even have the spare capacity to give production. To be fair, they do mention that as well. At least they're being honest about the fact that, look, we actually don't have spare capacity. So what's the point of coming up with a big number, which we're not adding anyway? So yeah, I mean, it's a symbolic gesture. It's going to make no difference to markets. We haven't changed our balances because it actually doesn't move the needle. So, Amrita, this doesn't move the needle, the needle, as you say, a symbolic gesture, but also you can't say OPEC hasn't done anything. And as Hadley and I were discussing before, we've seen Western leaders like Emmanuel Macron and President Joe Biden expending a lot of political capital to reset the relationship with Saudi Arabia. Is this going to ease some of the calls that we've heard towards the group from those leaders to pump more oil or... Will the narrative stay the same at this point? They know the issues around spare production capacity, but they don't seem to be listening. Well, I don't think the issues are going to go away, right? At least not until the midterms. Uh, and I think you're going to continue to see calls on OPEC from Western leaders to increase production, uh, not for a single second acknowledging the fact that the reason we are here today, uh, high oil prices, first and foremost, it's not Russia, it's not OPEC, it's basically years of underinvestment and you know, Western governments do have to take responsibility for the fact that they have been actively discouraging investment in oil and gas. And you know, it's been all about, let's focus on renewables. Uh, and yet demand hasn't come down because at the same time, governments are actively subsidizing uh, oil demand, right? So that's the mismatch that we are dealing with. And OPEC are for the first time on record coming out and saying, there isn't any spare capacity or there's not much spare capacity. We really need to hold on to this for a time when there's a real supply outage. I think we tend to forget the SPR is coming to an end in October, at the end of October. The embargo on Russia is going to kick in either in the first, sorry, first in December for crude and then for products in February. So I don't think the calls are going to go away, but equally, this is going to be the same situation. Either OPEC will end up holding flat in October or again, doing the symbolic 100,000 barrels per day gesture, which just re really won't mean anything for real markets.